So good, good evening and thank you for joining us tonight as we begin the narrowing it down stage of the Osborne Hall replacement project. A little over a year into this pandemic, we are still using Zoom as the best way to meet and still observe provincial health restrictions. Some recent numbers indicate that we're moving in the right direction and it may be that the day when we can meet in person will be here soon. I believe BC is lifting that a bit today as we speak. Anyway, until then, this is the best way to keep people safe while still gathering to share the information, get your thoughts and get some answers for your questions. Presenting with me tonight is Trish Morgan. Hi Trish, wave. <laughs> Peace River Regional District's General Manager of Community Services. We also have a number of staff who are working behind the scenes tonight to make sure things run as smoothly as possible. Obviously not as smoothly as we would like for this virtual tonight. Uh, the agenda for tonight is really quite short. Um, it's a short presentation followed by a question and answer session. We do have an hour. So we have plenty of time for questions and discussion. Uh, Trish will be doing the majority of the presentation and the purpose of the meeting is to share information about the now completed visioning stage of the project and about the stage we're moving into now. It's called the narrowing it down stage. We're going to present design options and uh, not costs tonight, but design options and give you an opportunity to discuss them and ask questions. Before we begin the presentation, I want to let you know that at this point you are muted and our chat function that allows you to ask the questions is turned on. After the presentation, we will give you some instructions on how to, answer, how to ask a question either through Zoom or if you're on the phone. Depending on how many questions we get, we'll do our best to answer them in order. Please be aware that this meeting is being recorded and it will be posted to the website for future viewing. Let's start. How we got here? Trish? All right. Thank you, Director Goodings, and good evening, everyone. For anyone looking for a history of the Osborne Hall, please go to our website on haveyoursay.prrd.bc.ca and click on the Osborne Project page. As Director Gooding said, we're here tonight to begin the narrowing, narrowing it down stage. How we got to this stage. So we began with an informal meeting with Osborne Community Hall Society and the engineering team last fall. On the phone tonight, we have Mike Saigon from Force Engineering, who has been assisting us with this project. And then the visioning stage for the project, that began in January, and that's when we mailed out an information package and survey to homes in the area. The survey gave options and sought uh, community preferences for what the new Osborne Hall could look like. And we held a virtual information session just like this one in February to share information and get community input. The general themes that emerged during the visioning stage are that people are generally supportive and that they have and that having a community hall will revive a sense of community, which has been lacking since the hall has been closed. Survey so results from the visioning stage, a stage, which we'll discuss in a moment, were shared with our engineers and they have come back with a design um, and two comp sets that we're gonna to discuss tonight. So Trish, I think no. it would be, Trish, can I just interrupt mm -hmm. for a second? I think people should sure. know that Mike uh, Zagon is on with us with Force Engineering and has been quite, uh, quite involved with the drawing up of these. So if there are other questions that we can answer, maybe he can. Right. Absolutely. So the survey results. So we had through, Team people respond to the survey, uh, either online or through paper. Uh, we asked what spaces you used in the old hall, and most people said that they used, it, used the open meeting area and the kitchen. The skating rink was voted the least used space, followed by outdoor fields and a fire pit. Understanding, of course, uh, the skating rink has been not in a condition for use for a number of years, too. When asked how close you live to the hall and how long you be, would be willing to drive to the hall for activities, most people said that they live within about a 10 minute drive from the hall. And most said that they would drive for about 10 minutes to go to activities. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when asked how often you would use a new hall, most people said they would use the hall weekly. 
Uh, less than 10% answered monthly or never. When asked how you would use the hall, there was a lot of support for almost all the proposed functions, but the most popular were the meeting space uh, for events and the least popular was for fitness classes. When asked what features you would like to see, uh, a divisible meeting spaces, kitchen and storage were the most popular in that order. When asked about uh, funding, most people said that they were willing to pay for the construction, um, but the responses varied. So 36% said they pay up to $100 a year on their taxes to build a new hall. 9% said they pay up to $75. 27% said they pay up to $50. 18% said they pay up to $25. And 9% said they were not willing to pay for construction. When asked what um, people are willing to pay for operating, so to pay for those necessary things like heating and um, and perhaps phone and that sort of thing, 18% said they pay up to $100 on their taxes, 9% said they pay up to $75, 36% said they pay up to $50, and 18% said they pay up to $25. 9% were not willing to pay for operating funds, and one, uh, one of the people who answered the survey didn't answer that question. So that brings us to the design concepts. And as Director Goodings mentioned, um, Mike Zygum from Force Engineering is on the line tonight. And so when we get to the questions and answers, if you have questions specifically about the design uh, of either of these uh, two concepts, uh, he uh, can definitely answer those for us. So uh, Mike used the survey results from the visioning stage to generate two design options. Both are designed to address the preferences you expressed for how you envision the building to be used, what activities you would like to take place there, and the role the building could play in the Osborne community. Design one, which is on the screen right now, is a 3,076 square foot building. It has a large gathering area, meeting space, kitchen, pantry, washrooms, and vestibule and cloakroom. The second one, which is on, uh, the, on the screen now, is a larger version. It's 3,601 square feet. It offers very similar features, but larger spaces for gatherings and meetings. And this design also includes a non-gendered washroom. And there's an example of that on the screen as well. So, um, survey. So, we're doing another survey. So this is a reminder, we'd really like you to consider these two options that have been proposed and the designs and the different features. Um, please look at the two designs over and if you haven't already, respond to the survey, which is in the informa information package. Uh, there's three QR codes on the screen, one to complete the survey online, one to download a paper copy, and one to take a closer look at the building design designs online. You'll also see these codes dropped into the Zoom chat. Simply point your phone at the code to open. If you've not done so already, you can drop the completed paper copies off at the PRD office in Port St. John, if that's more convenient. The survey asks about the building capacity, questions about the various spaces, things you'd like to see added or improved. And then if we can get some um, consensus on a design, then we can move forward with, an, uh, with a cost estimate for um, one of those designs. In July, we will be hosting another virtual town hall to talk about funding and the final design. At that point, we're gonna compile all of our engagement results. And again, in consultation with you, um, look at the final design options and then talk about funding and talk about uh, taxation and grants and a number of grants that we think may be coming available for coming this fall. Okay. My turn? Trish? Oh, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Is, sorry, so the floor is now open uh, to questions and discussion. <clears throat> so our moderator will detail how to ask questions for those who are new excuse me, to the virtual town hall format. Um, and, and those questions, of course, will come forward, I think, to myself first. And then if I can't answer them, I'll pass them on to staff or to Mike. So I'll turn this over now then to Rena or Kyla. 
Thank you, Director Goodings. So to review how this works, at this point you are muted. If you called into the meeting, please press star nine to unmute yourself, state your name, and ask your question clearly. If you logged into Zoom, use the raise hand feature or the chat function. Please note that submitted questions will be reviewed by the moderator before they are submitted to the director or staff. Please try to avoid speaking over others and be courteous to others. Let's begin. So can I ask a question before they start? Because I, I'm wondering um, on, on the... Um, Nine. On the questions, if uh, if if they are having trouble getting on to ask the questions and they can't do it on chat, uh, how is the best way? Is there room on the survey to ask those questions? You know, uh, yes, there is uh, there is some space there to ask some questions. That would be great because I, I think that's really important. We want to make sure that as many people as possible get as many questions as possible asked and answered. So who's got a question? Okay, I know we had some questions in the last survey that we did. Do we have those available? Uh, Director Goodings, we've got some frequently asked questions. Maybe we can start with those that we put into um, the package and then see if some, anyone's got some questions. Okay. I guess one of the questions um, that came up is why not repair the existing community hall? Okay. So the current, um, back in 2019, we had the facility, um, a condition assessment done on the facility and the cost to repair uh, the facility was uh, close to or possibly over now with COVID um, and the cost of um, materials going up uh, somewhere around a half a million dollars. So, um, and a number of, there was a number of big ticket items like the roof, windows, flooring, um, siding uh, were all in need of replacement. So it was at that time, I believe that you had talked to the society and said, why don't we start looking at the possibility of what a new hall might look like? just yeah. because the extent of the repairs was so great. And, and I think that's a great idea, you know, and because so much of what was done in the day when this school was built, uh, there are some not good things within that building that we don't want people to be, um, to have, you know, any contact with. So that's, uh, that's one of the huge issues that we have with the building. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we think to shut it down was the only way we could go. So other questions, I, I, I know we have a moderator that's taking questions. I think Kyla was trying to unmute somebody, but it looks like from Jenny, we have a question. Is there is a new skating rink planned for the new hall? So let me answer this one because you have a society and within the society, they have the ability to um, take on projects like the arena, uh, like the skating arena. I mean, it it certainly isn't going to be all paid for the first year, but it would it would go through the grants and aid process. And and Trish, you know the grants and aid process even better than I do. So correct me if I'm ever giving wrong information, but I I think that that would be the uh, that would be the way to go. I mean, I you know when I looked at the when I looked at what was said, I thought, yeah, well, no wonder they didn't use it. It wasn't usable. So I, I'm really looking forward to having something that you guys can use in the evenings, on the weekends, whenever you can get out on the ice and, and look after it. And and uh, there's a lot of other grants available too. So there's uh, the Northern Development Initiative Trust and co-op community spaces. There's quite a few other grants that would help with uh, getting uh, a new skating rink built again. And your your executive on the uh, society may need some help with some of this stuff, you guys. Anyway, go ahead. Any other questions or does that answer your question? Jen? Hello? 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 Hello. Can you is hear me? Jen, is Jen still on? Jen? 
I don't know where the gems are. Tina? Go ahead, Tina. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to let you know that we have uh, extra uh, copies here if somebody needs them. And uh, we also have uh, some thoughts on the uh, hall, um, uh, maybe to go with um, the the number two one. We really like that design, but we would like um, uh, wondering if we could get maybe like a, a baby room kind of thing or something like that, and uh, a storage room enough big enough for the uh, tables and chairs. Okay, so maybe that's a question over to Mike, is it? Mike, do you know if there was anything planned for storage? Sorry, I accidentally muted myself there. Uh, there is plans for, for storage and the exact amount and configuration can still be altered at this stage. Um, we would need a better idea of quantities and that kind of stuff. Most of the tables nowadays are folding and chairs are stacking. So whether the chairs had to be removed from the space or just the tables, there's probably enough room in the current storage room 114 in plan two to accommodate the, uh, the chair storage. But uh, certainly we can look at adding more storage. This is intended to be a starting point for discussion on plans and right. to stimulate those type of questions. Oh, thanks, Mike. And I think I heard saw someone in wondering about a change table for babies. And of course, that, that I think is pretty standard equipment these days, um, likely in both bathrooms, because lots of times it's dad that does the change as well. So if it's uh, two separate bathrooms, we would probably need two separate change tables. That's correct. If it goes with two separate bathrooms, that's what we do. If, if it goes with the all gender version, it's usually located in the barrier freestall so that there's a measure of privacy for it. Oh, excellent. Okay. Does that answer your question, Tina? Yes. Perfect. Yes, it does. Perfect. I'm waiting for more questions. Yes, I do have a question. Um, on both designs, it says the non-fixed table chairs capacity has a number, and then also the um, there's a different capacity for the meeting room, I think. Anyway, is that one plus the other, or is that, like, I was a little confused with those numbers. By That's the a good total. Um, yes, Actually, certainly. Like I mean, the, the, the building code determines occupant load. And the building code determines it by the use of the space. So in this example, um, the cafeteria space has a greater number of square meters per person than the non-fixed tables and chairs. So like if you were set up in a meeting situation with just chairs on the, uh, on the floor, you can certainly get the most closer together and, and more people in the hall. Whereas where you had tables and chairs, you would have less people. And the code assigns a number of square meters per person for each use. So I've included what each would be, depending on how you envision the space to be used primarily for meetings or weddings and banquets or that kind of thing. That gives you an idea as to what the theoretical maximum occupant load of the space is. But in both designs, it should be noted that the number of washrooms is the ultimate governing uh, capacity of the building. So in this case, both designs will hold 150 people. Right. Okay. So does that mean that the number of people there is limited to 150? It is by bathrooms. And now that's not to say you couldn't have an event where you had supplemental washrooms and that kind of stuff. You okay. you wouldn't violate the fire code if you had more than 150 people in it. But by building code. If I design for 180 people, the next jump up in washrooms is a considerable uh, extra number of stalls and oh. sinks and that kind of thing that has a dramatic effect on space. Right. And cost. Oh. And cost. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Other questions? So, Trish, do you have any others that were frequently discussed uh, in the survey? Questions? 
Uh, I guess the the questions that came in were, could people make uh, suggest changes? So we've talked about that, and um, so we're continuing to take people's feedback until June first, and then we'll provide all that feedback back to Mike, and then he can make some tweaks to the design, um, which will run by the society and director Goodings, of course. And then in July, we'll bring it back with the cost estimate. Okay, so and then June we'll talk about. June 1st. Yeah, I was just going to say June 1st is coming very quickly. And so we, we do need to urge everybody to pass the word. As I know everybody's been busy seeding and calving and getting cows out to pasture and branding and all the good stuff that we do. Um, so I, I, I urge you to make sure that they all know that we would love to get those surveys filled out and any questions that they wish to ask listed and then we'll uh, we, you know we can we can move on that yeah i see i see the number five on the chat is there i know we've, we've addressed one or two is there others no we've just gotten those two questions okay. typed into the chat yeah okay all right so we're open we're wide open to uh, other questions So the other thing I guess that I should mention is that I will do my very best to assist the Osborne community with um, some funding. I, I mean, I know that I'm restricted, so I can't, and I certainly can't fund it all or anything, but I might be able to assist you with some of the costs. Um, and, you know, when it comes to um, the interior, some of that equipment would be considered capital and could come through our grants and aid. So there's all those all those things that we need to remember and consider that, uh, you know, there are ways to, to kind of lower that, uh, that high cost to the people. The other thing that I don't, you know, and I don't know how many of you uh, are in line for grants and aid, or I'm sorry, for the, uh, um, oh, what do you call it, from government? On site, you know, you get the extra money if you're over 65 and you have, you know, so some of that uh, would show that some of you will not pay anything uh, because you, you would fall under that. So I don't know, Trish, is there any way for us to, to assist them to understand who would be and would not be? I guess that's a question for Terry. Eh? Uh, I think that would be a question for our chief financial officer, but we could look yeah. into that to find out what the um, homeowner grant includes okay. when homeowner. you're. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So and I do know that being a senior myself, of course, <laughs> um, you know, like it, it, it has a, it makes a huge difference to any additional costs that might come our way. So that's certainly something to look into, and um, and try to determine what it, you know, what it might be. I see a couple more. I see at least one more chat. Is there? A, is there a question? Am I on? Sure. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, we are also uh, wondering about a small play area in there, if that would be possible, and then uh, also. Uh, uh, some thoughts on how much if if uh, our fridge and stove and stuff like that, uh, all the stuff that uh, we have new in there, that we have put new in the old hall here, if that would be usable in the new one. Okay, that's a good question for Trish, I think. I believe it is. Uh, certainly. So I, I think Mike and I talked about, uh, and Brenna and I talked about that, uh, at the beginning of this and that um, he's aware that there are some newer elements to that hall or to the existing hall right now um, and he'll be keeping an eye out for those uh, for when it comes time to construct to see what can be used. Some of the things we had talked about were the newer kitchen cabinets. They may not go into a new kitchen but perhaps they go into another area for storage um, if they don't meet the right configuration. I think there was 
Uh, Tina, correct me if I'm wrong, but a newer furnace also. Uh, so those sorts of things. So we'll be keeping an eye out for those things for sure. Yeah. Okay. And is there, um, will he take the, the stuff all out or do we need to do that ourselves? When it comes time, yeah, when it comes time for demolition, um, no, we'll be hiring a contractor to do the demolition and then uh, removal of anything that can be uh, reused in a new hall. So it would be removed uh, very, very safely and stored where? Uh, we'll have to sort that out, but I, I'm going to assume probably some on-site storage in a sea can or something like that. Well, yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Director Goodings, we do have another question in the chat. Can the heating be turned down in the main area and just the washroom and kitchen, just be in the washroom and kitchen to prevent freezing but lower ongoing heating costs? So, Mike, do you have any thoughts about ways to make uh, a new building more energy efficient? Uh, absolutely. If on both plans, if you look at the mechanical room, there's two generic squares there, which in my vernacular means there's two furnaces and two zones. And the intent would be that the the areas like the bathrooms and the, the kitchen that need uh, constant heat would be constantly heated on a setback. And then the second furnace heats the, the other areas on a uh, demand basis where they're turned on. Now, when we get farther into the design, we'll look at more of a what's called a DCC system or a digital direct control system where who's ever coming down to the hall could physically phone the hall or use the internet to up the heat before they even get there. Wow. <laughs> Technology, hey? All, all very easy. I mean, that's that type of thermostat is uh, $230 on the shelf at co-op right now. Wow. Okay, any other questions? Dr. Goodings, I guess we have one question for those who um, have dialed in or zoomed in, and it's a question about the all-gender washroom. Oh, How yes. are people feeling about that idea? It is kind of a new concept for our area. Um, it saves on some space, but uh, obviously they're pros and cons, so I think Mike threw out two options there. Um, it would be good to hear what people's thoughts. Yes, I was very curious to see which one would be the preferred. At this point. Are you waiting for feedback right now? Well, sure, anytime. Sure. Yeah, I, I always wait for feedback. So I using... Yeah, go ahead. In our family, we would vote for... Um, not having the, what do you call it? The all gender bathroom all in one. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, that's good Good to know. And I hope that that's one of the questions on the survey that uh, if it's not there, you guys could write in and, and let us know what you think. I think that makes quite a difference to uh, Mike when he's doing up his final report. Now I see another one says, my family prefers separate gender washrooms. No, yeah, that's Catherine and David. So that's good. Good to know. I kind of thought that's the way it would be, to be quite honest. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and there certainly is uh, places in the survey to, to let us know how you feel about that, too. Yeah. So if your internet is, hello. Go ahead. Sorry. 
It's really tough when your when your phone's not working. Okay, I see a, a number nine on the chat, so we must have other questions that are coming in. Yeah, I, I think there's someone who's trying to get through. Brent is just going to. Um, so, what does that what does that mean as far as uh, some excavators digging holes in the ground and builders and pulling dirt? What's how does that look? Sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Can I again? Oh, it isn't. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. But you still got to move dirt to start that sometime. When, when do you think that will start? I'm well, we'll hoping soon. But well, well, I don't know, it's probably going to be quite hard to start. I think it's going to be. Yeah. You put that up to the end. Am I on? There's a couple of conversations happening. So let's take yours next. You go ahead. Please. Um, I like the design too, but I would also prefer separate gender washrooms. Okay, thank you. Somehow I think it might be it might be best to have these questions in writing so that we can really make sure that we are answering them correctly. Yeah, so if you weren't able to get through, please complete a survey or you can always email us at PRRD dot dc dot b at prrd dot bc dot ca we'll put it into the chat it's a little bit complicated but you can certainly also email us if you even if you've submitted a survey and you've thought of something after the fact right yeah even if it goes after the first of june right absolutely yeah wow. okay okay We'll do our best to take any more questions if we can understand the questions. There's the email address on the screen. You all know how to get a hold of me as well. I think you do anyway. I don't know, Mike, do you have any other thoughts, anything else you wanna ask people to think of with in relation to either of the designs or anything else to point out? Um, not particularly. I mean, uh, I think the feedback is useful. Um, issues like the playroom and that, if that community wants it, can be uh, easily accomplished. They should be a little forward thinking to think if they want that rink, it would be most cost effective at this time to do a couple all weather dressing rooms or warming shack on one side of the hall to be able to accommodate the rink without having people enter the hall. Um, you know, those kind of features are, you know, very forward thinking and can be easily and cost effectively integrated now rather than uh, added on in the future. As we're all aware, nothing in construction gets cheaper as time marches forward. So, you know, it, it should be uh, a facility the community wants and will use. It's the most important part, for sure. Thanks for that, Mike. So no uh, I see we have some more numbers on the chat. I don't know whether we can can put them, get the questions brought forward. Anybody? I'm not hearing anybody. I'm not seeing any hands going up. That's the trouble with being on virtual, right?
So hey, uh, I, maybe we can. Go ahead. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, Hello. Director Gooding. Uh, um, I wonder, um, so what do people think about an ad additional space for a playroom? Is that, it's, um, I think it was Tina who threw that out there, that idea out there. What, what do other people think of that idea? I think it's a good idea because there usually are a lot of children. If you have larger meetings like birthday parties or family gatherings, there would likely be a lot of children. And Mary Peters says it's a great idea. I like that. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll throw that in the mix, I'm sure, and make sure when you get the survey or when you when you answer the survey that you add that one on. <clears throat> We've got someone who's raised their hand, so if you're on the phone, go ahead. And if you're muted, you could try star nine on your phone first. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I unmuted myself earlier and didn't know how to remute myself, so I, I wasn't sure <laughs> if it stayed unmuted or what, but... Yeah, I agree that the um, the playroom would be a great idea. Yeah, probably be well used. Hey? Yeah, usually there, like if you have um, bigger gatherings, there is usually quite a number of children, and so if yes. it was winter time, it would be good for them to have a Absolutely. place to go. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's a good. It's a good, good comment. Anybody else? This is your chance to, to tell us, to tell everybody what your thoughts are. And, and of course, you know, when you throw something out, you're wondering whether or not it would be acceptable to the rest. Well, this is a good good time to, to float it and see how many are, are on side with you. There was one up on the screen, but I didn't catch what it was. Uh, the comment is, I like a big open hall where kids are included. Ah, oh, yes. Very important. Okay. I don't want to rush it because we still got time. Okay, do you want to run through, uh, Trish? Oh, there's another one. We need to consider the cost. We primarily, primarily don't have more than 50 people going to hall functions. So that's a good point to make. But you know, when you have a wedding or you have, you have a family service of some sort, oftentimes you get way more than that. So you do want to be able to accommodate to the best of your ability. And uh, you know, there we have communities that actually do uh, like schnitzel nights and things like that. Maybe we could, uh, could see how you feel about doing a schnitzel night in the new kitchen. I'd like to come up. I think Tina's already promised us pierogies. Uh, <laughs> that's better, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't want to rush anybody. I got to I got to reach over and grab my water though. I'm getting thirsty. So in both designs too, they do have um, movable dividers, so you can make it one big open space, or you can make it into two smaller spaces as well. So would they be separately heat controlled? Mike, Mike can probably answer that one. So that if you only needed the smaller space, you would only heat the smaller space. Uh, certainly that can that can be easily accomplished in either design, uh, as well as you could run two events at the same time, uh, a meeting or suppose a, a nearby industrial uh, 
uh, project needed a uh, safety training or something, both of those events could happen simultaneously. That's why the the okay. kitchens are configured with two pass-through windows, one that can serve each of uh, of the rooms, and uh, you know keep that uh, continuity going, where you know you can serve coffee and that kind of stuff to both rooms at once. Oh, I didn't realize that, Mike. I'll have to have a closer look. So a comment we just received from Jenny, it needs to be more interesting for kids. They need to be able to play some kind of sport or do some activities, either indoor or outdoor. So does, do you have, Jenny, do you have any idea of what those would be? No, not yet, eh? That's fine. Does anybody in Osborne homeschool? Do you know? One family does. Oh, okay. One family does? Yeah. Apparently, yeah. So Jenny said a skating rink would be good, a uh, good start for sure, but a playground or baseball field would also be good. Yeah. So some winter activities and some summer activities. Yeah, that's a good thing. Good thing. I you. agree that considering the rink is a good idea, and I think partly why it hasn't been used is because it hasn't been functional. So maybe if it was up to par, then there would be activities and it would be used. I think I agree with you, and I, I mean, I know the last time I was up there, it was pretty obvious that uh, it was not in good enough repair to never think about having a sheet of ice outdoors uh, in, in the space. So I think that's something we definitely need to look at. We're down to about the last 12 minutes, but I sure don't want to leave anybody out. One uh, comment is that it takes someone always to flood and clear. We use our dugout at home. <laughs> well, there's that point too. Make sure you put that in on your um, on your survey. You know, we wound up with sixteen participants, which is is good considering that you were having problems with phone lines. You've done very well. I appreciate that. How's your road? I'm sorry, I have to I have to ask this because I don't get up to Osborne very often. How's the road from Cecil Lake up to Osborne? Bad? Good? Nobody wants to talk about it? <laughs> I drove in that way last time, Director Goodings, and I didn't find them to be that bad. Okay, that's good. How long does it take you to go from Osborne down to Cecil Lake? Any of you that drive that direction? Forty minutes. Okay. And so I, I see the one other comment is you you take the Doig, right? And and that's fine. Where do you get your mail? Cecil Lake, Rose Parade. Fort St. John? 
I get mine in Fort St. John, so I usually drive the Doig. Oh, okay. And Catherine and David are Cecil Lake. I know there are others that are, but. always something I'm interested in, uh, you know, as, as far as maintenance and um, trying to keep the road in reasonable shape. I know there are times, especially in the spring of the year, when it gets very, very, very rough. I know that isn't part of our, that, <laughs> that isn't part of our discussion tonight, but I don't very often get a chance to talk to you guys. So this is a, a learn it all. We appreciate your care, Karen. Ah, well, we, we have to keep trying, you know. Okay, we now have 25 listed in the chat room. But we only show 16 participants. So I'm not sure what that means. Oh, it's uh, 25 comments. 25 comments, oh, okay. Okay, anybody else have a question or a comment or are you uh, okay now to put the rest of your questions on the survey? And, and will most of you, I hope, fill out that survey. And especially now that you've had another look, you know, you may have filled it out before, but please don't let that stop you from filling it out again, because I think you have more information now than you did before. And it is, uh, it's important to get your feedback, really important. Okay, well, eight minutes, don't wanna quit early. I don't hear anybody wanting to speak. So I guess that's what we're going to do. We're going to quit early. So again, I want to ask all of you, um, you know, to please fill out the survey and drop it off to one of our offices or fill it out online. Information is on the screen. Um, so visit haveyoursay.prd.bc.ca and click on the project page to find all of the items discussed tonight. I've really enjoyed having you on and I, I, I have to appreciate how hard you have worked to get it to this point too. So thank you for that. Thank you to Mike for drawing up the preliminaries and for joining us tonight to answer these questions that we wouldn't have been able to answer. So thank you, Mike. And uh, no problem. we wish you all a very, very good night. Hopefully the moisture we got today will, uh, will be great. I know it is going to be here. We were really getting dry. Okay. Staff, do you have anything else? Oh, nothing from us. Just please no. fill out the survey. If you have any other comments too, you can always email us as well. Yeah. Or phone us. Either way. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been great yeah. chatting with you. We are concluded. Thank you.